Hello, everybody. It's uh, Sunday evening, and uh, we're excited about uh, being here with you, and I hope that uh, everybody gets to, to view this, and this is kind of our evening service right now. Uh, still, you know, just keep telling you, if you have a need or anything, please call us, and and uh, love to hear from you. We'll be trying to contact you as much as possible and talk to as many as you, of you as we can. But uh, we just want to get started. I'm going to have just a brief word of prayer, and then we're going to jump right in. But first thing I want to do, if you got kids around, anybody, kids, uh, come around a little bit. Uh, my wife and, uh, and her friend Coco are going to do a special for you, and this is just for the kids because we want to have something for them tonight. So um, uh, I'm going to have a word of prayer, and while I do, then hopefully uh, Coco will show up, and, and hopefully he's going to be here on time because she needs him to sing this song. So let's, uh, uh, let's pray. Father, I pray that you bless our people. Lord, I ask you to please just be with us, and Holy Spirit of God, be with us right now. Lord, it's a unique way for us to come together, but Lord, I'm asking you to bless all that we do. In Spirit of God, I yield myself to thee and ask you, please be with your Beth, be with me, be with everybody that's watching right now, all of our church. Keep your arms around us. We need a mighty hedge of protection right now against the evil that's in this old world. And Lord, we need you, we praise you, and we'll, we'll depend upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. All right, I think they're about ready. Let me see. Hey, hey, um, Coco, come in. It's your. It's time for you now. You better hurry up. Come on. Come on. This is my friend, Coco. Oh, All right. there on, he Coco. is. Hi. There he is. Hi, Coco. Boys and girls, for those of you who don't know yet, and of course, this is my friend, Coco. He's one of my favorite little guys. I've had him around for a long, long time. And so, but we're going to sing a song for you today. But I just want to tell you that I'm going to be doing another puppet show. You can be looking for it on oh, Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> another puppet show. So, and we'll hear chapter two of the story that we've been telling. So I just wanted to let you know that. All right, Coco, you ready to sing with me? Are yeah! You ready? Okay, all right, let's go. You boys and girls, you know the song, Give Me Oil in My Lamp, Keep Me Burning. I want you to sing with me. And Coco, Coco is going to be singing too, okay? You think you can do that? All right, ready? Here we go. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me all in my lamp, I pray. Hallelujah! Give me all in my lamp, keep me burning, 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 keep me burning till the break of day. Why don't you sing, Hosanna? Sing, Hosanna! Sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Why don't you sing, Hosanna? Sing. It's uh, time, Joe Beth and I are going to sing you a song a uh, long time ago. I think it was about 1983. Uh, we had little Volkswagens going to Balma College, and it was a snowstorm, and I had no money, and I was on my way back from uh, Bible College one day, and I ran out of gas in a snowstorm in my Volkswagen. So I started pushing the Volkswagen down the road all by myself. Nobody stopped to help me, but that's the north. You know how it is. And so uh, we were pushing... I was pushing it down there trying to get home and had no money to get gas. And so uh, I just I had to do something to encourage myself. So I started singing to myself and I wrote a song while I was pushing that Volkswagen. And when I got home, I ran right in the door, sat down and put all the words down. And uh, this is the song 
that I wrote while I was pushing that Volkswagen in the snow. I was lost in sin one dark and gloomy night. I had no peace within, my soul just wasn't right. Then I met Jesus, and he took my sin away. Now I have a beautiful morning and a beautiful day, beautiful morning. When Jesus I shall see, beautiful morning. With a trump he'll come for me, beautiful morning. He'll take us all away, beautiful morning. Yes, a beautiful day. Now I love to speak of him and what he's done for me. How he came into my life and gave me victory. Jesus, with my whole heart, I love you in every way. Thank you for a beautiful morning and a beautiful day, beautiful morning. When Jesus I shall see, beautiful morning. With a trump, he'll come for me, beautiful morning. He'll take us all away, beautiful morning. Yes, a beautiful day, beautiful morning. Yes, a beautiful day. All right. Uh, you can tell that was very well rehearsed, but uh, uh, again, I think this is um, it's just a blessing for us to be able to, to get together. And I really enjoyed this morning seeing some of our folks and some came by to to be with us and and uh, and just say hi. And some stayed in the parking lot and some, uh, uh, well, just came in the building and, and took some time and we talked a little bit. We're doing everything we can to protect our people and protect our community. And, and so, uh, uh, God's been good to us and I'm thrilled that he provided this way that we could get together also. Now we had a good service this morning, I believe, and, and God's been blessing us and taking care of our needs spiritually and, and also, uh, physically and financially. And so, but tonight <clears throat> I want to just jump right into the, the service. You know, um, there's, um, uh, uh, in Psalm 23, uh, what we've been talking about, it says, a Psalm of David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. And now that's where we've gotten to at this point where uh, we're going to de be dealing with thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know, we've been talking about Psalm 23 for 20, for several days. And, uh, you know, this could have been written by David, you know, when he's under attack, when he's being chased. It, it could have been written a lot of different times. I don't think anybody really knows exactly when it was written. But I think, you know, it's possible it could be written uh, when he was younger, when he was a shepherd. And, and uh, he was being prepared to be the king. He's being prepared by God. And, and so I may be wrong on that, but uh, I think it's the heart of a shepherd is coming out uh, in this. God's allowing that, of course. Now, David started out young, understanding who he was as a child of God. I think this is very important. I think it's very important that we understand who we are as a child of God. During stressful times like this, it's very important to know who we are uh, in God. And uh, we are a child of God. I am a child of God. As, you're, as a born-again Christian, you're a child of God, a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And, and so uh, it's just, it's a very important thing. David, I believe this verse, this, uh, this passage shows us that. David understood it as God's child. He would never want for anything needful or important for God knew his need and God was, a, was loving enough and powerful enough to provide his need. You know, that's what, what we see in these first verses is how powerful David knew God was. And he was powerful enough to be able to do whatever David needed. And he was loving enough to want to. And so that was good. And David 
understood as God's child uh, that he would never want for anything. David understood that sometimes God will make you lie down, but he always does it for our good. You know, there's an illustration, and I've read it uh, several times in studying for this, but uh, it talks about that a shepherd sometimes will break the leg of a sheep. And how uh, he'll break that leg, not because he wants to hurt the sheep, but he breaks the leg of a rebellious sheep. He breaks the leg of a sheep that won't listen. It keeps trying to go where it shouldn't go. We're going to danger. And and, uh, and so he'll, he'll do that. He'll break the leg of it. And then that means the shepherd has to personally take care of that sheep and keep that sheep with him. The shepherd has to move it around because he can't walk. And so uh, when he finally heals, he's so used to being with the shepherd he, he's comfortable with the shepherd. He doesn't want to be anywhere else but with the shepherd. And so sometimes God will take us through some hard knocks because he wants to bring us closer to him. And so uh, that's part of what we learn. Now, David knew that God's word would satisfy his soul as the pure, clean water of the word of God uh, will will satisfy you as as when you're really thirsty, you know, you're out in a hot day and thirsty, that water is so refreshing. And that's the way the word of God would be. David knew that the word of God would restore him when he had, when he fell, when he fell and, and uh, when he was down and when, when he had uh, messed up, you know, that God was there, still a loving God, a merciful God that wanted to restore him. David knew that all uh, after all God was to him and all he was to God, that God would protect him through the dangers that came upon him. And there would be nothing to fear for the shepherd was with him. And again, this is where we, we've kind of studied through. And that leads us to tonight. He was not afraid even in the valley because God was with him to defend him, protect him, and comfort him through every trial that might come. Now, let's just look. It says, thy rod, this, we're just take the small small portion, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now, the rod is a shepherd's club or weapon. It's uh, the way he, you know, we'll describe, we'll talk about that in a minute, but it's it's a club and it's, it's, a, it's a form of a weapon. The staff is uh, more of a walking stick. It's a support to the shepherd. It's also uh, there to uh, sustain the sheep, and we'll explain how he does that. And then comfort is a very unique word. We look at it, comfort with me. Well, truthfully, that means, uh, in many ways, it means to bring me to repentance. He comforts me by bringing me back to him. He also com- he has pity on me, and he has compassion on me. But, but that pity, that compassion is to bring me to repentance. Now, the book of Romans has a passage that kind of describes this rod and the staff, I think. It's Romans chapter 2, verse 3 through 5. And you just take a second. It'd be great if you had your Bible right now, if you could take a look at this, because I think it, it sort of describes what God really means about the staff and the uh, the rod. And we we have uh, Layla is, is our I think she was amen in me here just a second ago. Our little dog is uh, maybe want to get involved in our service tonight. But Romans chapter two, verse three through five says, And thinketh thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doeth the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness? and forbearance, and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasureth up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteousness, righteous judgment of God. Now, I think what you see in here, you see two things. You see that God judges sin, and he does that. He doesn't do that to destroy us necessarily. He doesn't do that to hurt us. He's doing that initially. Judgment comes. It comes to bring us back to him. The correction comes to bring us back to him. But it also says the goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads to repentance. So the truth is, sometimes we'll go through trials to come to repentance. Sometimes it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. That's kind of like the rod and the staff. And so God uses correction and blessing both to bring a man to repentance. But everything that happens in our life, it's always to bring us back to God or bring us closer to God. 
you know, whether it's whether it's what we call good or whether we call uh, bad, it's always to bring us back. Sometimes God does some incredibly wonderful things to bring us closer to him or to bring us back to him. And sometimes uh, God allows some things that are pretty tough to come in our life. And uh, they seem like bad experiences, but truthfully, if they bring us closer to God, they really weren't bad at all. So the shepherd used the rod to protect the sheep from danger or correct the sheep and keep it from danger. Now think about that. He he used the rod to protect the sheep from danger. Maybe it's an animal came in. Maybe you know something came to attack. Maybe it was a snake out there. They say these shepherds, this rod was uh, uh, not not real long. I, I don't know exactly how long. Maybe two and a half feet or something like that. Maybe three feet. Or, but they would take that rod and had a big uh, end on the end of it that they'd carved out and smoothed out. But uh, And uh, a lot of times they think that it had probably a point on the other end, but they could take that rod and throw it great distances and be incredibly accurate and, and hit a, an enemy of the sheep or, or maybe uh, kill a snake that was there. And so it was there to protect the sheep. But it, but it was also there to keep the sheep from danger. If a sheep was starting to go into a dangerous way, they would throw that rod and, uh, and, and they would drive the sheep back to the full with that rod. And they were said to be, and said to be, uh, that they are extremely accurate with that weapon of theirs. Now, he used uh, the staff to guide the sheep. Uh, he guided them with it. He made them go where he wanted to go. He could even hook them and pull them with it. Uh, but he also inspected them. He used it to push their wool apart and to see if there was, you know, infection or, or disease or, or some, something there in the sheep. And so, uh, he, he used it even to save the sheep. Uh, you know, if it, maybe it was about to endanger itself and pull it back, but uh, or to simply comfort the sheep. I read this story that that a shepherd would sometimes would pick out a sheep and he would just walk as they would be making their long journeys. He would walk and he would walk with his his staff held against the side of a sheep and that sheep would not leave that. He would want that feeling of being comforted by being against uh, the shepherd's staff, and it was just there to be like a touch, uh, like we would sometimes walk hand in hand, uh, it, you know, down a road. And and it's amazing. David was used to write scripture, but I believe it is very obvious that David knew and believed the word of God that he already had. Now, this is going to be important with this portion that we have. The word of God, I believe, is our rod and our staff. You see, I believe the word of God is the rod and the staff, but the spirit of God is, is the, the power of the staff. And so the, the rod, uh, the spirit of God, the comforter makes us understand the purpose of both. And so uh, the, he under, makes us understand the purpose of the rod, the purpose of the staff. The word of God corrects us. The spirit of God, God convicts us of our need to obey. The word of God protects us. The spirit of God leads us to believe it and trust it and follow it. The word of God is our map. The spirit of God is our guide to take us through the map. The word of God diagnoses us. The spirit of God leads us to a cure. And um, the word of God is our source of comfort and the spirit of God makes that comfort personal to me. And so when, as David's saying, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Now, the shepherd, God was not in physical form there with his rod and his staff with him. What did he have? He had the word of God. He had the word of God, the rod that protected him. He had the staff that comforted him, convicted him, brought him and kept him close to God. The word and the spirit protect me by correcting me, leading me, directing me, guiding me. Thank God during times like these, we have his rod and his staff to comfort us, to bring us to our knees that we might see our need of God. And that's really where we're, we're coming to. We, we said, you know, these, these first few verses were getting us ready for the, the, the hard times. And if I really understand 
who I am in Christ. If I understand the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want because of that, because he loves me so much. He's, he's, he's all powerful, so he can provide anything, but he's, he's so loving that he wants to do it for me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. You know, so God just, he goes through these steps and what he's doing is he's creating a relationship with us. And was, as we create that relationship with him, as we understand who we are and who he is and how much he loves us and that everything he's doing for us is for our good, then when we walk through life and we, we hit the, the, the issues, the problems, the trials, when we, when we have coronavirus in America, uh, the Christians can still rise up and say his rod and his staff, they comfort. His rod and his staff, they protect me, they convict me, they bring me back to him. And, and that is so important. Right now, more than anything else, and this has been kind of our year of the Bible, and this fits so perfectly, because what this is saying to us is saying, flee to the word of God. Flee to the word of God. We're in a, a, a large movement right now, even in Christianity and in, in, in a, a real conservative Christianity that's moving toward emotion-driven and experience-driven Christianity. We're basing it on what somebody said, what something something that happened in our life, uh, something some experience someone had, and, and I'm I'm here to tell you I, I'm thrilled to hear that God has done something wonderful in your life. But but I, you must show me and you must take me and help me to see that this is all because of the Scripture all because of the word of God. If we don't have the word of God, we really have no basis. Experience will keep us bouncing around like a pinball in a machine. We're just, we're, we, we don't, experience can take you anywhere. Uh, emotion can take you anywhere and it'll take you everywhere. Uh, but the truth is we need to flee to the truth of the word of God. The answers that we need are in the Word of God. The peace that we seek is in the Word of God. The joy that we desire is in the Word of God. The, the, the promises that we need to find to get us through uh, tumultuous time, it's in the Word of God. And I'll say it again. I've said it before. Uh, I've written for so many Bibles over the years. Life has many questions. The Bible has every answer. We've got to truly believe that. Man thinks he's so powerful. Man thinks he's so wise, so smart. But man left to tend for himself and take care of himself and provide for himself is ultimately, whether he realizes it or not, he's like helpless sheep. God said so. We're just sheep. We're going to end up in a mess. We go our own way, we're going to end up in a mess. We need the word of God is our standard. We need the word of God is our authority in our life. And I challenge you to get in the word of God. This is a time we need to be in it more than we've ever been in it. We need to be studying more, looking more. And, and when we pray, say, Lord, help me to know what to do by showing me some, showing me in your word. Show me the truth in your word. You know, I just want to say tonight, thank God we have a shepherd that loves us so much that he'll give us the answers that we need in the most trying of times. I, uh, I pray that this will be a help and blessing to you. I challenge you again, don't just read words. I would say pray and ask God to direct your heart and mind to a passage of Scripture. I would go there and I would search that passage of scripture. I would, I would read and I, and I would think about God. What what do you want me to to study? What do you want me to to think about? Where's the answers that you have for me? They're in the book, and I believe the Holy Spirit will guide us to the truth that we're seeking if we'll really truly seek it. So I hope this is a blessing to you. I want you to have a wonderful 
night to night. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Wouldn't hurt at all. Uh, we would love to hear from you. We're as lonely for you as uh, hopefully you are for us. We miss you so much. We miss being together. We miss our family. You know, the church is a family, and, and we really do miss being together. And uh, But our hope is in the Lord, and we're going to get through this thing together. So stay safe. Stay strong. If you need anything at all, give us a call. We love you. God bless you.